In the previous video, I gave you the algorithm for calculating the minimum and maximum functions. In this video, I want to talk about optimization problems in applied mathematics. Instead of just finding the minimum or maximum of a function, I want to find the optimal solution to a particular applied problem, and I'll work through this by examples. And I'll start with a classic example, one that shows up in many old calculus textbooks. It's a pretty contrived example, I admit. It's not explicitly a calculus problem that someone would actually do in a real-world situation. However, it is still a useful illustration. The problem is this. There's a rectangle with height a and width b. The perimeter of this is constant. 2a plus 2b is fixed, can't change. However, the area is unknown. So, what is the largest area you can enclose with a fixed perimeter? Very old textbook versions of this problem were about fencing. If you had a fixed amount of fencing, that is a fixed perimeter, what is the largest area you can put inside the fence with a rectangle shape? I'm not sure that any fence builder in history has actually ever done that calculation, but sure, why not? The nice thing about this example is that it demonstrates the challenges of applied problems. This is an optimization problem. What's the largest area? However, I don't have an area function of one variable. I can't use calculus to solve this unless I have a function. All I have now is capital A equals A times B, and A times B is two variables. However, I also have the perimeter equation. P is 2A plus 2B, and P is constant. Well, therefore, I can use this. There is setup to do here. I can solve for A in this equation, and then I can replace A in the area equation to get area equals B times p over 2 minus b, or bp over 2 minus b squared. This is now a function of one variable, b, and I can apply the algorithm for min and max. So I differentiate to get p over 2 minus 2b, and then I set this equal to 0 and solve, and I get b equals p over 4. And here the algorithm would continue with intervals and testing them to determine if this is a minimum or a maximum. However, for applied problems, I can often use the situation to make a conclusion. Remember what these letters mean. b equals p over 4 means that the side length is one quarter of the perimeter. Well, that's a square. And this makes some sense that a square would maximize the area. Also, as b gets smaller or larger, the result is flattening out the square to a longer and narrower rectangle and eventually it flattens out to nothing, so the area must be decreasing. This has to be a maximum just from considering the geometry involved. The conclusion is that a square maximizes area for a fixed perimeter, and again, that's a very believable conclusion. For something more practical and less contrived, I want to talk about optimized distances. There are many problems where it's desirable to find the minimum or maximum distance between moving objects. I want to give you a general idea about what those problems look like. I need to start with the distance between two points. So, let A, B, and C, D be two points in the plane. I can draw this right triangle. The hypotenuse is the distance between the two points, so I can use Pythagoras. The side lengths are the differences between the coordinates. So the distance H is the square root of C minus A squared plus B minus D squared. Here, I'm going to use a very convenient trick. Instead of considering the distance, I'm going to use distance squared. If I am doing optimization problems, then the closest distance will happen at the same time or the same point as the closest distance squared. Squaring the distance changes it for sure, but it doesn't change the optimization problem. The point that minimizes distance squared will also minimize distance. Optimization in mathematics is full of these kinds of tricks to make functions easier to work with. Here, it means I don't have to deal with the square root, which is much nicer. So here's the setup of an optimized distance problem. I have one fixed point, AB, and I'm going to have a locus with points x, y, and I want to know where on the locus is closest to or farthest away from the point. I use the distance squared function which I have from the previous slide. d of x, y is x minus a squared plus y minus b squared. Well, this has two unknowns, so I need to do some setup to make this a single variable function. 
I used the equation of the locus to replace either x or y, turning d into a single variable function, and then I optimized that function using the normal min-max algorithm. Here's an example. The fixed point is 4, 2, and the locus is the parabola y equals x squared over 4. What point on the parabola is closest to 4, 2? Here I can't ask for furthest away since the parabola keeps going off to infinity, so the distance is unlimited. However, 4, 2 is not on the parabola, so there should be one, or perhaps more, closest points. This is the distance squared function with the points 4, 2 and the unknowns x and y. And I'm going to replace y with x squared over 4, that's the equation of the locus. Then I have these two binomials. I expand them both, foiling out all the terms to get these six terms. I can simplify this into a degree 4 polynomial, 20 minus 8x plus x to the 4 over 16. The x squared terms from the previous binomial expansions very conveniently cancel here. And this is the function I want to optimize. To optimize, I take the derivative, which is negative 8 plus x cubed over 4. And I set this equal to 0 and solve, and doing this leads to x equals the cube root of 32. Then the matching y value is given by the locus equation, y equals x squared over 4, which is the square of the cube root of 32 over 4. Is this a minimum? Well, I could argue from the geometry that it must be, like I did with the previous perimeter question, but let me also do the intervals here. The domain of the polynomial is all reals, so split it by the critical point of x equals cube root of 32, and I test the derivative at 0 and 4, which are in the two intervals. The lower derivative is negative, and the higher derivative is positive, so this is changing from decreasing to increasing. This indeed is a minimum. And here's a picture of the situation. 4, 2 is this point outside the parabola. As the parabola passes by this point, there is indeed a closest point. The coordinates of that point are the values I just found, cube root of 32 and the square root, or the square of the cube root of 32 over 4.